Hi everyone, welcome to another exciting tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to animate your buttons in GDevelop. Okay, so as always I have prepared a um, demo project with just uh, three buttons here. I'll just show you exactly what they do now. So we have like, you know, simple states like when you uh, put your mouse over the button it will just increase in size with a nice smooth animation and it's valid for all the three buttons and also when we click we see we can actually trigger different states so you can open another page with this or do something else it doesn't matter uh, but uh, also I um, handle things like you know if I press the button it doesn't change the state immediately only when I release so we make sure that a user is actually sure what he's doing because if you press and then move the mouse away nothing will happen so I'll show all those little details and how to handle those animations. It's very easy. Uh, so yeah, let's go. So this is uh, an empty project. Uh, I have only my three buttons here and the text object to show the status of each button. Uh, and I have no events here. So let's start to recreate uh, the previous project. So I'll just drag those boot buttons in and try to align them kind of nicely. Okay, that's fine. Um, one thing I want to make sure uh, that you do is actually to set this uh, point, the origin point, uh, right in the middle. And the center point should be also right in the middle for each of those buttons, because that will depend how the animation will look. Uh, because when we increase an object, it will uh, increase it from a point. So if it's in the middle, like uh, the object will increase uh, its size equally on all the sides. If this uh, point was like in the left, top left corner, it would just increase to the right. So uh, yeah, let's make sure it's in the middle uh, and that's cool. And one thing I want to make sure as well, uh, just to start with, so uh, that we center those buttons always in the middle, because if we change the, the window size, it just sticks to the left, okay? Uh, so that's the first events we will be adding. So. Let's add a condition and say leave this empty in order to make sure that this always happens. Um, then I choose a button, button number one, and I say position, uh, X position, so horizontally. It will be always. Um, we calculate the scene, uh, so just type scene, scene window width, so the, the size of the window, and we divide it by two. And that's how we find exactly the middle point of the whole window, right? You can do the same for the vertical, but we'll, we'll not be doing this uh, in this example. So uh, if I now press play, the only button which is aligned right in the middle of the screen is button number one. So as you can imagine, we can just copy and paste this two times and uh, just replace this with button number two and button number three. So, uh, okay, so now if we press play, they're all aligned in the middle, so that's cool. And uh, another thing we need to make sure that each of these buttons has a behavior uh, twin, because we'll be using twin to animate our buttons. Uh, so I have, a, have it already here, but you can always add it from here. So add the behavior to object and choose twin. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about twin, just watch this video here. Uh, it's, uh, it, it will explain you a little bit more things about twin. Cool, uh, so I have it on each of my buttons, all right? So they're all there. And and we'll start by animating the first button, okay? So the first button, uh, we add a new condition, and what we will say is we choose our button and type mouse, and we choose this uh, condition. So if the mouse is on top of this object, okay? And this is going to be the main condition, and then we, the rest will be uh, subconditions. So I just created a new one and drag it here under it, and say uh, trigger once, because we don't want uh, the animation to trigger continuously one uh, while our mouse is on top of the button. We just want to trigger once, right? So trigger once, and oops, sorry, and uh, the action is going to be uh, using twin. So we search for twin, uh, but the type of twin we need is the scale one okay so add object scale twin okay identifier so we just for the um, uh, so it's easy to, to read for us uh, you can write whatever you want but i will just type um, 
hover, so that's the hover state. And I scale it up a little bit, okay? So I'll just choose 1.1. So 1 is the default scale, uh, like original scale of the object. And if you add, uh, if you go up uh, with the number, it will scale up, become bigger. If you go uh, under uh, number 1, it will become smaller, okay? So 1.1 is fine on X axis, 1.1 on Y. So we will scale it equally, uh, proportionally. If you want to, uh, like, you know, uh, stretch it a little bit on the X or Y axis, you will have new different numbers here. And the easing, you know, this is all the types of animation you can have. Uh, for this one, I prefer something bouncy. So, um, so there is this one, bounce past this one. Uh, I think it's nice. And duration is always in milliseconds. So I think 100 is fine. Okay. So let's see, let's see what uh, what will happen now. So if I go with my mouse over the button, it should make this a nice bounce animation. Yes, it was very subtle, nice bounce animation. So that works. But obviously, if you you see, like it doesn't go back, it doesn't do nothing. So we need to add some more stuff there. So uh, the next one I'm gonna add is uh, actually when we click. So what what's what's gonna happen when we click? Okay, so. I'll just search for mouse, uh, pressed left button, and this will be actually valid for touch as well. Uh, and always add trigger once because we want to make sure this triggers just once and not, not continuously while, while we are holding the button. And uh, again, we will be using twin, right? So I'll just copy this just so it's easy and I paste it here. And we need to change a little bit of the values. So when I press, I want actually uh, have a different animation and I want my button to scale down and it actually should scale, uh, its scale should be less than the original one. So it should be under number one. Okay, so uh, the state's gonna be press and the scale is gonna be 0 0.95, should be fine. So uh, same for the Y, 0.95. Uh, I want to have a different animation here. I don't want the button always to bounce like a jelly. Uh, so when we press, we'll do something like ease out quad. So it will, when we press, it will go fast and then slow down at the end. And I want it to be also quite fast. So I think 50 is going to be all right. Okay, uh, that's cool. And let's try to play. So I'm hover and I actually pressing, and it's kind of pressed, right? So cool it becomes smaller obviously if I just remove the mouse it will stay there because there is no logic to um, for the button to come back to the original state but still if I go hover it will just increase the size so yeah let's manage that uh, other state uh, so uh, a new condition and say um, a mouse uh, is released button released left button cool and trigger once uh, here. Uh, but this is a subcondition of uh, if the mouse is on top of the button. So when we are on top of the button and release um, our uh, left uh, left key on the on the mouse, it should go back not to uh, the, the scale one, so to the original scale, but still back to this one because we are still on top of the button. So we just can copy this and paste. So what's gonna happen now is if I go on top of it and I press and I release, it will go back to the hover state. Okay, so that's cool. That's all correct. And now we need to manage, the only thing we need to manage is actually when we remove uh, our mouse pointer from the button. Uh, so yeah, let's add a new condition. And this shouldn't be the sub condition of this one because we want to basically invert this, right? So I'll just drag it back and I'll say uh, when we choose the button, mouse is on top of the object and we just invert it. So when it's not on top of this object and uh, always add trigger once. Okay. And here actually now we can scale it back. So I'll just copy one of these, paste it here and I change a few things. So the scale should be one and one. And I'll leave this animation, it's fine. It's gonna be a bounce animation, duration is fine. And I just change the state uh, to default. So this is gonna be the default state of our button. 
So uh, I think that's all works now. So, uh, okay. That's cool. This works and I can press. You see? So I pressed and I just removed the mouse. It goes back to the default state. So I think the button works quite nicely now. Um, okay, so uh, we will not be adding uh, any action yet to the button, uh, right? I'll just want to make sure we do the same thing for all the other buttons, okay? So I'll just copy these two. Copy, create a new event just to have something to paste it on. Select it and paste it. So we have exactly the same block of uh, um, events and conditions. So the only thing we need to do, it's very fast, just replace button 1 with button 2 everywhere we see it. So button 2 here, and button 2 here, and this 4 as well. Okay. I did try to make it with groups, so I just do it once. So, uh, But there are some conflicts between uh, different buttons if they are on the same group. Uh, I didn't manage to solve that, so for now I'm doing just like, you know, copy-paste stuff. Uh, so let's do the same thing for the other button. So copy and paste. Button number three. Button number three. And these ones as well. So at the moment, uh, they all should work uh, in the same way. So we have this effect actually working quite nicely. We can press each of these buttons, okay? Uh, so uh, the next thing I want to do is actually uh, to make sure that we trigger uh, the clicks in the a, in a right way. So I have this little text object, just a normal text object, nothing special here, um, which will show us the status, so which button we clicked, right, and it will change accordingly. Um, so. One, one mistake that uh, I did at the beginning is that I trigger actions when uh, my mouse is actually down. So as soon as I click, the action will trigger. But you know, uh, it, it's good actually to give a little bit uh, uh, of time for the user to actually decide if he clicked the right thing. So we will not be triggering action on, on the pressed state, so when you press the mouse, but uh, instead if you release it and if you're still on top of the button. So I think that's the best way to manage this. Uh, so I add an action here, not, not here, but here. And I choose status and modify text equals to something like, let's say just button one pressed, okay? That's cool. And we just copy this and paste in the other buttons as well. So uh, released, okay, so we can paste it here and just change it from one to two. And same thing here, paste from one to three. So what's gonna happen now? Uh, we'll just see what happens. So I click, nothing yet happened. Only if I release, we can trigger action. And this action could be like, you know, change of a scene, change of a color, uh, exit game, whatever action you want. In my case, it's just a change in text here, but that's the place where you actually need to do this. Uh, so that's cool, it works button number two pressed, button number three pressed. So it all works perfectly. Uh, I know there is like a little bit copy-paste uh, monkey work here to do, but uh, you know, that's that's how it works in my game and uh, it works very well in, in this example. So uh, that's basically it from my side. The only thing I can tell you, you can actually add sounds here as well. So you could add sound when you actually hover the mouse, so you would add a sound here. And you can actually add the sound when you press the button. It could be a different sound, and you obviously uh, just put it here. Okay? So uh, that's another advice. Uh, and yeah, uh, this is basically it. Uh, it was a short tutorial, and uh, if you liked it, please subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Discord, uh, visit my website, and see you again soon for uh, another exciting tutorial. Mm -hmm.